I'm going to show you how to add facial expressions, emotes, dances, animation, change some outfits, change some hair colors, add dynamic bones, and much more to your avatar. This is specifically for Vroid avatars, but the same concepts apply to most avatars. If you want help uploading your avatar or don't have a Vroid avatar made, then check out the previous videos in this series that'll all be linked down in the description. So in the last video, you should have uploaded your avatar to see if there were any issues that you wanted to fix in Vroid or Blender. Before doing all of this Unity stuff, you want to have the final version of your avatar just so you don't put in all of this extra work and then have to go back to Vroid to change the height or something. Once you've done that, we can move on. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add facial expressions to the avatar. So for the facial expressions, what we're going to do is we're actually going to duplicate the avatar. Anytime we're creating animations, we want to duplicate the avatar and do the animations on the duplicate and not the main avatar. So we're just going to select that. We're going to hit control D and there's our duplicate. And then we're going to hide the original avatar. Go up here to window windows and then hit animation that'll kind of just pop up somewhere and then drag it down i like to have it down right here and then click on the model click over here where it says blend shapes and these are all the different blend shapes that we've made these are all the facial expressions mouth visings everything real quick if you need glasses for vr then you should check out vr wave prescription lenses these lenses are the perfect solution if you need glasses or even if you don't and you just want to protect the lenses in your headset from getting scratched or ruined let me tell you as someone who needs glasses using vr wave prescription lenses make VR so much easier. Glasses can get scratched and can scratch the headset lenses themselves. Plus they just get in the way and aren't very comfortable. Prescription lenses solve all of these problems. Plus you can protect your eyes with the addition of a blue light filter that doesn't change the color tone in the headset, making them a superior option if you want to protect your eyes while spending hours in VR. VR Wave will be linked down in the description if you want to check them out and you can use my coupon code VIRTUALPANDA. So to create the different expressions, we need to create an animation. So we're gonna hit create right here. We're gonna create a folder called animations. And then in that folder, we're gonna call this first animation, let's just say um, neutral, okay? And then we're gonna hit the record button right here. And it's normal, your avatar is gonna drop down like this. And then while it's recording, you're gonna go over here to the right where it says face all, make sure you do all neutral. And we're gonna turn that all the way up. All right, then you're gonna see what's called a keyframe right here. What you're gonna do now is we're gonna hit stop recording we're gonna grab these two hit control copy go over one frame and then paste and now we have our basic animation for just the neutral facial expression to create a new animation just go over here where it says neutral and then hit create new clip go through and do that for all of the other facial expressions now all right now that we have all of our animations we need to create a controller for these animations so um, select our duplicate avatar we can go ahead and hide that or delete it and we're gonna go back to our main avatar and unhide that then go back to the project and we're going to go to VR chat SDK examples three animation controllers and then you're going to pick the third one which should be the avatar v3 hands layer dot controller that should be the one we want you're going to hit control d to duplicate that and then we're going to drag the duplicate into the assets folder back to the assets folder um, we're going to rename this by right clicking and hitting rename we're going to rename it to fx because that's going to be our fx controller and we can drag that into the animations just to keep everything nice and tidy all right so here we have all the different animations and we have our fx controller now to assign the animations we just double click on the fx controller we're going to choose either left hand or right hand now this the way this works these animations are going to be where you make different gestures with your hand and then your facial expressions uh do the same thing as those gestures there's other ways to do it but this is the most common way so depending on whether you want it on your left or right hand or both you'll pick one i like to do them on just my left hand what you're gonna do is select whatever you want so let's start with um let's say fist and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna drag in let's do angry for fist and drag that into where it says motion and then make sure where it says right defaults is selected and that's it just go through with whatever you want when you want an open hand you could do fun uh point whatever just make these all the different expressions and then for idle i like to have the idle Idle one just be the neutral facial expression just whatever I said is neutral that's what I actually want my neutral face to be and then we have our facial expression set up let's click on the avatar we're here at the avatar descriptor scroll all the way down to the bottom and then we're gonna hit customize and portable layers and then under effects we're gonna hit default non-transform and then we're gonna drag in that effects controller that we just made and now you can upload it and test the avatar make sure that all the expressions are working for you now let's add some actual emotes and when I say emotes I'm referring to like the dances that you can toggle on or like the different uh, motions you can do with your body that are toggleable. Now, first you're gonna actually need some emotes and a great place to find those is at vrcmods.com. If you just search up emotes, they have tons of different options that you can try out. I'm just gonna use this dance and emotes animation pack that I found and I'll also link to it. You just hit download. 
It's gonna download as a Unity package that we can just drag right here into our animations folder. And even though I dragged it into the animations folder, it still ended up here in the assets folder as dance emote. So I'm gonna drag that now into the animations folder. And there it is. We got some dances, and then we also have some emotes right here. All right, now let's set up the controller that will activate these emotes. So we're gonna go back to assets, and then we're gonna to go to the VR chat SDK, examples three, animation, controllers, and then it should be the first option that says VRC avatar V3 action layer controller. So we're gonna duplicate that, control D, and then we're gonna bring the copy into the assets, and then we're gonna bring that into animations, and then let's go ahead and rename that. Now we have our controller, let's add that to the avatar descriptor before we forget. So let's select the avatar, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and then under portable layers, under action, you're gonna hit default action, and then drag in the new emote. And I guess if you wanna be consistent, you could have named it action instead of just emotes like I did, but it doesn't really matter. All right, let's go ahead and open that up now, and these are all of your basic standard animations that come with any avatar, you know, the stand and wave, point, dance, whatever. Now, there's two different types of animations that you can do. There's ones that loop, and then there's ones that play once and then they're done. So some of these are going to loop, like for example, the stand and cheer loop. It says it right there in the name. The way you can see if it's a looping one or not is by selecting the line out of it. And then if it says right here has exit time, if that's not checked, that means it's just gonna loop forever. Whereas like the stand and point, if we select that one, it has exit time selected, which means it's gonna play once and then done. So if you wanna just replace these with some new animations, that's super easy to do. We're gonna open up our animations that we found downloaded here. Let's go to dances and let's replace um, the loop. Let's replace the stand cheer loop. All you need to do is drag in one of these new animations. Let's do, I don't know, break dance and just drag it in right here where it says motion. And that's it. Now, instead of doing the stand and cheer, whenever we select that, it's gonna do the break dance. I personally like to keep the basic emotes there and then add new ones on top of it. So to add a new emote, what you can do is while holding control, select the node, um, the two lines, and then we're gonna hit control C to copy it and then control V. V. All right, so now we have our new node. We're gonna drag it up here just to keep everything consistent. A right click prepare standing, select make transition, and we're gonna make a transition to the new node up here. And then select that, let's rename it. Um, let's add the first animation here, which is just zero to 100. So we're gonna rename this zero to 100 and we're gonna drag in the animation to right here. Also, we're gonna change the transition. So right here, if we want it to loop, then we're gonna uncheck has exit time. Um, or if we want it to just play once and be done, we're gonna make sure that's... And then you need to do that on the transition going into the node and also the transition going out of the node. For now, I'm gonna leave both checked because we just want it to play once. And then also under the first transition, we're gonna add a condition. I'm gonna make it so that it equals, it's VRC emote equals, and then we're gonna change it to 17. Now, the reason we're doing 17 is between all of these animations that are in here, some of these you don't even like really use, between all of these that are in here, there's 16 animations already. So to add more, you have to start at the number above that, which is 17. And then the next animation we're gonna add, we're gonna go to 18, 19, 20, so on and so forth. In theory, you could add uh, however many animations you want, though I did run into an issue where I added like 100 and I couldn't upload the avatar because it was too big of a file. So that's really the only problem. I think that was just for a quest avatar too. So for PC, you could probably add even more. So we've only added one animation for this tutorial, but the process is the same. Just copy the node, paste it, check the exit time, all of that. So before we're done here, we need to go over here to this line between wait for action and prepare standing. And then it's going to say VRC emote less than nine. We're just going to get rid of that. We're just going to select this and hit the minus sign to get rid of that. Now it's going to recognize anything above zero. So any animations above zero, it's gonna recognize as a uh, animation that I could play. Once you've added all of the different emotes and dances that you want to add to your avatar, we now need to add the actual radial menu that we're gonna use for activating these emotes. So we're gonna go to the animations folder again. We're gonna right click. We're gonna hit create uh, VR chat avatars, and we need to create both of these. So expressions parameters, and then also expressions menu. And we're gonna rename the parameters one just to make it easier. We're gonna rename that to parameters, and then and the other one, we're gonna rename that to main menu. And then back selecting your avatar, we're gonna scroll all the way down. Under expressions, you're gonna hit customize and they're gonna drag main menu to menu. 
menu, and then you're gonna drag parameters to parameters. All right, now it's added to the SDK. Now we need to actually set up the menu. So let's create um, a different sub menu. So what happens is, is with this menu, you can have eight different options. So if you have more emotes than that, you need to create sub menus as like folders. Think of them as like folders. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click the main menu. We're gonna hit Control D to duplicate that. And actually I'm gonna duplicate it again because I'm gonna have um, a couple different sub menus. So first we're gonna name one of these. We're gonna rename it to um, just default. We're gonna have the default animations in that folder. And then this other one, we're gonna rename it to dances because whatever dances we added, we'll put there. And then if you wanted to, you could have other folders underneath that. So if you have like 30 different dances, you could have a folder for dances. And then underneath that, dance folder one, dance folder two, dance folder three, whatever you want. You can get as complicated as you want or as simple as you want. All right, so on the main menu, we're gonna add a control and we're gonna hit the drop down there. So we're gonna name this whatever one of these first sub menus is gonna be. So let's do default. You can change the icon to whatever you want the icon to be. Let's just do this hand waving one, why not? And then you're gonna change the type to sub menu. Then we're gonna drag the menu that we made, the controller we made, the default one over here to sub menu right there. And then we're done. Let's add another controller for the other menu and we're just gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna call it um, dances, choose an icon. This dancing one looks good. Change the type to sub menu and then drag in the actual menu over to it there. All right, so now let's actually add the animation. So let's open up the default one and then let's click on the animator so we can see their names. Let's add um, sad kick. That'll be the first one we add. So again, select default, add control, rename it to whatever we're adding, which in this case is sad kick, whatever that means. I'm not gonna add an icon for this one. And then you can choose whether to have it be a button or a toggle. If it's looping, if you want the animation just automatically repeat itself, then it's gonna be a toggle. If you want it to just play once and be done, then it's gonna be a button. In the case of sad kick, if I select it just to check, it has exit time, which means it's just gonna be a button. So going back to my menu, I'm gonna change this, leave it as button actually not going to change anything. Under parameter, we're going to select VRC emote INT, and then we're going to change the value to match whatever the value we had. So sad kick. So if you click on the transition going into sad kick, this line right here, we can see that it was supposed to be number seven. So if we go back to our default, we can change the value here to seven to match that. So that means now when we activate this option, it's going to activate the seventh animation, which was assigned to sad kick. And then just go through here, add, like I said, you can have up to eight eight different controllers. So you can add all of the different default ones. And then over here in dances, you can add the uh, new dances that you added. I just have the zero to 100. So I'm just going to add that. And there you go. Now we've added some emotes. So if you open up VR chat, you can test your avatar right now. The way the radial menu should work is you should have a main menu with two different sub menus. And then when you open up the default menu, you should have, I just added just this one animation. But then if you open up the dance menu, you should have this other animation. I'm keeping it real simple for time for this tutorial tutorial, again, you can add and fill up all the different slots for all the different animations. All right, now let's add some props. Props are objects that you add to your avatar that you can toggle on or off. First, let's bring in an item. For this, you need an FBX file of some 3D object. It can be whatever you want. As long as you get it in an FBX format, it can be anything. I once did a Mark Zuckerberg avatar and gave him a bottle of barbecue sauce. And on my main avatar, I added a panda head. As with the animations and emotes, VRChat Mods has a lot of good items that you can add. For this avatar, I think I'm going to add this bowl of ramen right here. I think that makes sense. For me, this downloaded as a Unity package that I'm just going to import into the project. But really, all you need is just like the FBX file. And it uploaded as a models folder, noodles. Uh, here's all the noodles. And here's the actual ramen bowl with everything put together. So we're going to go back to our uh, scene. And I'm going to drag the ramen bowl into the hierarchy. And it is kind of a big big ramen bowl. So what we're going to do is we're going to start reducing the size. You can do that over here on the right as the scale, even as 0.1, that's still a little bit big. So we'll try 0.05 maybe. All right, 0.015 seems to be about the right size for me. So now I'm going to reposition it. You can do that by dragging these arrows. It works kind of the same way as it did in Blender. And then we're going to position it. Uh, in this case, I want it attached to one of my hands. So I'm going to bring it over here. By the way, if you want to change the scale, you can also use the scale tool. Instead of typing a number, you can come to the scale tool and do it this way to get it to right about the right size. And then to rotate it, we're going to use this rotation tool. Kind of works the same way as it did in uh, Blender. So we're just going to get that attached to the palm 
palm of the hand. We'll go back to the move tool to reposition it. Now this again is gonna be a little bit of trial and error to get it positioned perfectly correct. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to import your avatar, see how it fits on the avatar and then maybe move it around some more. Um, Cause especially when you have your avatar hands opening and closing. So that can kind of introduce some weird variables. You'll probably never get it perfect, perfect. But for now, I think this is pretty good. We'll just move a little bit closer to the hand. Yeah, this is probably good for now. So we're gonna leave it right there. And actually what we wanna do is now we need to attach this to the actual hand. So let's open up our avatar right here in the hierarchy, just expand these out. And then we want to find the uh, left hand. That would be the left hand. So we're gonna go spine, chest, um, left shoulder, left arm, left elbow, left wrist. And you know what? We can attach it to either one of the fingers or to the wrist. I think I'm gonna attach it to the wrist. That way um, it doesn't move with the fingers. So to do that, what I just did is I dragged it to the left wrist and now it's a child of the left wrist, which means that anywhere the left wrist moves, the bowl's gonna go with it. And now if you want the uh, item, whatever item you're adding to be hidden by default, and then you press a button to toggle it on, then we're gonna go ahead and hide it right now. So like before, we're gonna make an animation. So let's duplicate our avatar. I'm just gonna delete the other one we used and just start over fresh with the one that has the ramen bowl attached. So we're gonna hit control D and then let's hide our original avatar and then go to the animation tab. We're gonna create a new animation and we're gonna make two animations, one for ramen on and one for ramen off. So uh, we'll call this one ramen on. We're gonna hit record. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a property and we're gonna find our ramen bowl. So it'll be in the armature, hips, spine. Just find it wherever you attached it in the armature here. For us, we did it on the wrist. You're gonna select the ramen bowl and then you're gonna select is active and you can hit the plus sign on that to add that. And now we just wanna check this right here and that's gonna activate the ramen bowl. And that's it for our this animation. Let's make a new animation for ramen off. Hit record, add the same property. So ramen bowl is active, hit the plus sign. And this time we're gonna leave it unchecked so that it's actually off, it's hidden. And then stop the record button. So now we have our two animations here, ramen on and ramen off. So now as with everything else, we need a controller that's gonna activate these animations. We're gonna use the same controller that we already made for our facial expressions. The one we called the FX controller. We had that in animations and that's right here, effects. We're gonna go to the parameters here and we're gonna add a new INT parameter. We're gonna give it a name, let's call it ramen, and then remember exactly how you spelled it. In fact, it might be good to just copy because you need to know exactly how you spelled it, caps and everything. We're gonna need that later. All right, then we're gonna go to layers. We're gonna add a new layer. This one you can call whatever you want, but we're just gonna go ahead and call it ramen. We're gonna go to the settings, turn the weight all the way up, and then now we're gonna drag in one of the animations we made, or let's drag in the animation for off. For some reason, our animations got saved here in the uh, noodles folder for some reason. It doesn't really matter, but I like to keep all my animations together. So I'm gonna grab that and I'm just gonna drag it over to the animations folder and same thing with the ramen on. All right, so we're gonna drag in the animation for ramen off first. And then next we're gonna drag in the animation for ramen on. Make sure you do it in this order because whatever one you put in first, that's gonna be the default animation. Now we're gonna make a transition from off to on by right clicking off, make transition, and then clicking on on. We're gonna click on this transition. We're gonna add a condition. We're gonna select ramen or whatever you name the parameter. And we're gonna select equals one, which is true. One being true, zero meaning false. Now we're gonna make a transition from ramen on down to ramen off. Same process, just right click and drag. Then we're gonna click on that transition and we're gonna add a condition. We're gonna choose the same parameter for ramen and then we're gonna hit not equal one, or you could also just do like equals zero. Either one should work. On both of these transition, make sure that has exit time has been deselected because again, that's when we know if we want it to loop and we want these animations to automatically loop. We want to have the ramen bowl constantly in our hand. So make sure you deselect has exit time. All right, so now we have the animation made, we have the controllers made, and now we need to add these toggles to the actual radial menu like we did with the emotes. So before we made a main menu and parameters. Here in parameters, let's go ahead and add a new parameter and then make sure you name this the exact name that you put in the parameters section of the controller. So in the parameters of the controller, we named it ramen. So now in these parameters in the animations folder, we need to make sure it's also called ramen exactly spelled the same. 
and we're gonna change the type to INT. All right, now let's look at the menu. So we have our main menu with a default folder and a dances folder. Let's go ahead and let's add another menu. So we're gonna right click, create VR chat, avatars, and then expressions menu. And we're gonna name this uh, toggles. It'll be our toggles menu. And then in the main menu, let's go ahead and add a control, name it toggles or whatever you want. You can add an icon, change the type to sub menu, and then drag the toggles menu into this section right here. All right, now go to the toggles menu. And we're gonna add a control. We're gonna name this ramen, change it to a toggle type. And then in parameter, make sure you select ramen int. So that's pretty much it. Now we have a main menu with three different folders, one for their default animations, the dances, and then our toggles, which include the ramen. And then we're gonna add some others to the toggles in just a second. Might be a good idea to go ahead and do a test build of the avatar and just make sure that the positioning of the prop is okay and that everything else is working fine. Don't forget to go back to your main avatar and upload that one and not the animations avatar. In fact, we're gonna go ahead and delete that. We're done with that. Cool, we've added some facial expressions. We've added some toggles for like props. Um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a material toggle or in other words, we're gonna make it so you can change the texture of different parts of the avatar. So for example, let's say you have multiple hoodies that you wanna be able to have your avatar change between. This is all gonna be pretty much the same exact process as creating the prop toggles, the ramen bowl that we did. It's just gonna be a little bit different when it comes to making the animation. So first we need a new texture. So in our case, I just wanna change the hoodie. So I use Canva for pretty much any easy photo edits that I need to do. This is a black version of the hoodie and uh, we could drag on whatever we want onto here. Just for fun, I have the Oculus logo. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add the Oculus logo to this hoodie. And we're just gonna position it exactly how we want. Doesn't really matter, but as soon as you have your hoodie, then we're gonna download it. Now, if you Atlas your textures in Blender and you only have one texture, this is gonna be a little bit harder because what happens is when you Atlas them together, you see how the eyes and the hair, they're all together in like one material, or this is probably a better example. This has got the skin next to the face, next to the mouth and a couple other things. So if yours is like this, what you need to do is you need to drag your new material over the top of the hoodie or whatever other material you want to replace. This is only if you have one texture. In my case, I kept the hoodie texture separate because I knew that I'd wanna be able to switch between different hoodies. And so it's just a little bit easier having it separate. Whatever the case is, once you have a new material that's gonna replace one of your materials, you're gonna go ahead and drag that into this folder here with your other textures. Now we need to go to the materials and we're gonna find whatever material we're using for our hoodie. Or like I said, if you're using one texture, just that one, and we're gonna duplicate it. So now I have two hoodie materials. In one of these, I'm gonna go over to here. I'm gonna hit unlock shader. And then where it says main texture. So main texture, I'm gonna change that by dragging in the new texture right there. We can go back to materials. Cool, so now I have this black hoodie with the Oculus logo, and then I have this white hoodie. And by the way, you can switch between them on your avatar by just dragging them and placing them over the hoodie in the avatar. Cool, we have our new material. Now, I just wanna show you something cool you can do. Like I said, I kept the eyes and the hair separate because there's some cool things you can do with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate the eyes and hair. And then in one of these duplicates, I'm gonna go ahead and apply it. And in that, I'm going to unlock the shader. I'm going to go to color adjust, select that. And then now I can change the hue of both my eyes and the hair. It's actually kind of trippy, kind of cool. So if I had a different hairstyle or hair color or something that I wanted to do, um, I'm gonna turn up the emissions a little bit. Like say we want to do this purple and yellow kind of look. That's not bad looking at all. Now I have a separate new hair and eye material that I could use. And with this, I didn't have to create a new texture or anything. I'm just using the material I have with a slightly different shader. So now I have two different materials that I can toggle to. I can toggle to a new hoodie and I can toggle to a new hair color. All right, now that we have our materials ready, we need to do what we did with our props. We need to make an animation, add the animation to the effects controller, and then add a toggle button to our radial menu. So let's start with the animation. We're gonna duplicate the avatar again. So just control D and hide our original. With the new avatar, we're gonna go down to animations. We're gonna create a new animation and then just make sure we're actually putting this not in that folder, but in the assets and then uh, animations folder. And we're gonna name this one. We're gonna name this one something like uh, hoodie um, default. This is gonna be the default standard hoodie. We're gonna hit the record button right there. Then on here, we're gonna click that drop down, click on body 
body. And we're gonna scroll down right here. You see where the materials are. Find the one for the top and then just delete it. And then go back to your project and drag in the material that you want by default back onto the avatar. Now go back to the animations tab. Now we have our keyframe, so let's stop recording. All right, now let's do another recording. We're gonna create a new clip and we're gonna do this um, new hoodie. We'll just call it new hoodie for now. We're gonna hit record. And then all we need to do is go to our uh, project and then find the new hoodie, which is this black one, and then just drag that onto our avatar. And then if we go back to the animations tab, boom, we have our keyframe and we can hit stop recording. All right, so we're done with this duplicate. We can delete that and go back to our original avatar. Now we need to just edit the effects controller. So go to animations in your assets folder, find the FX controller. And just like before, we're gonna create a new parameter, an INT parameter, give it a name. We'll just call it hoodie. And remember, copy this because you need this exact spelling and everything. And then we're gonna go to layers. We're gonna add a new layer. This one you can call whatever, but we're just gonna be consistent, call it hoodie. Go to the settings, turn the weight all the way up to one. And then with hoodie selected, we're gonna drag in the default hoodie. And then we're gonna drag in after that, the new hoodie. We're gonna make transitions. So from default to new hoodie, and then from new hoodie down to default. The transition from default to new hoodie, we're gonna add a condition, change it to a hoodie equals one, and then deselect has exit time. And then the one going back to hoodie default, we're gonna add a condition, select hoodie equals, and then leave it at zero. Or again, you could also just do not equals one. And don't forget to remove has exit time. Do that for the hair also, or whatever other changes you're trying to do, but we're just gonna do it for the hoodie for right now. All right, so now let's add it to our radial menu. First, let's go to parameters. We're going to add a new parameter. And remember, this is where you need the exact spelling put in. So hoodie, just like that, and make sure it's an INT parameter. Now we can go to our toggles menu, add control, rename that hoodie or whatever you want to call it, change the type to toggle from the parameters, choose hoodie, INT, and done. So now go ahead and test your avatar, make sure everything is working. I will say that on my personal avatar, I tried to add three different hoodies and I could only ever get one of them to work. The other two never worked to you know, toggle between. I don't know if there's some rule against having like multiple toggles between different hoodies or maybe I'm doing something wrong. If anyone knows any tips to help me figure that out, let me know down in the comments. All right, the last thing we're going to do today is we're going to add dynamic bones. Dynamic bones are the part of an avatar that can kind of bounce with movement. This includes part of your hair, the hoodie strings in our case, and even certain body parts. VRChat just announced Avatar Dynamics, which is a new system that's going to replace dynamic bones, and it's going to allow different body parts to not only bounce, but also be interactable, as in like you could grab somebody's ear and bend it and it'll stay bent. From what I understand, you can download the new VRChat SDK from their Discord, and in that SDK will be the new Fizzbone system as part of their beta. Once you import that into your project, you can add Fizzbones or Fizzbone colliders basically the same way that you add dynamic bones, which I'm going to show you how to do right now. Or if you already have dynamic bones on the avatar, the new SDK will give you an option to convert the dynamic bones to the new Fizzbone system when you go to export the avatar. Just know that the new Fizzbones are in beta and won't work in the public versions of VRChat just yet. For them to actually work in game, you have to switch over to the beta version of VRChat. So until this feature exits it's beta, your best option is to add dynamic bones like I'm about to show you how to do, and then convert those and re-upload your avatar once the new Fizzbone system actually leaves beta. And if you're watching this and the Fizzbone systems are already out of beta, then adding them is basically going to be the same exact process as what I'm about to show you. You'll just want to add Fizzbone components instead of the dynamic bone components like I do here. By the way, dynamic bones don't work on quest avatars, but the new Fizzbone system will work on quest avatars. And this is the only paid part of making the avatar. It only costs 20 bucks, but if you want to skip it, that's fine. You can just wait for Avatar Dynamics to come out for everybody. So to add dynamic bones to your project, you need to go to the asset store, make sure you're logged in. You're just gonna search dynamic bones, or I guess it's just called dynamic bone. You're gonna purchase it, you're gonna download it, and then hit this import button to import it into your project. So the first step to adding dynamic bones is to add colliders. Colliders are basically invisible barriers that say, um, if your hair is bouncing, it can't go inside this collider. So for example, we wanna put a collider on our head to make sure that the hair doesn't bounce into the head. So to do that, we're gonna find the head in the hierarchy over here, spine, chest, neck, and then here's head. So we're gonna right click on head and we're gonna hit create empty. 
It's gonna create an empty object as a child of the head. We're gonna rename that to head collider. And then with that selected, we're gonna add a component on the right. We're gonna look up um, dynamic bone collider. And then this sphere right here, this yellow sphere, that's the actual collider. So right now it's too big. So we're gonna use the uh, resize tool to just bring everything down. And then we're just gonna position that right around the forehead there. Maybe make it a little bit smaller. Really with this, I just wanna make sure that the hair is not really going into the forehead. So just make sure it's positioned nicely to avoid hair bouncing into the forehead. All right, that should be good. Again, it might be a little bit of trial and error just to get it perfect. Now we can add dynamic bones to different parts of the avatar. So for now, like I said, you can put it on the hoodie strings, you can put it on the chest, you can put it, I think even on the hoodie itself, like the actual hood. Um, for now, I'm just gonna do the hair. So what you wanna do is you wanna add the dynamic bones component to the parent of all of the bones. So for example, instead of adding the component to each of these hair bones, which would take a lot of time and it wouldn't be very optimized, we're just gonna add a component to the head. So select head and then over here on the right, hit add component and then add dynamic bone. Now this is going to apply a dynamic bone to all of the children of the head. So we don't want dynamic bones on our eyes or the collider. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to exclusions. We're gonna select the size as five because we have five items we don't want to be included. And then we're just gonna drag each of those to this list right here to make sure that you know all of the hair gets dynamic bones, but not any of these eye bones or the actual collider. We also need to add the collider here. So select colliders. We only have one that it needs to pay attention to and then drag in the head collider right there. Um, we also need to, in the root right here, we need to drag head to the root section right there. So it actually applies to all the different hair. All right, and then the rest of the settings let us decide how bouncy the hair is gonna be essentially. On GitHub, I found suggested values for all of the different body parts if you wanna use these as a suggestion. So in our case, we're gonna uh, make the damping 0.2 the elasticity 0 0.05, the stiffness to 0 0.8, and keep the inert at zero. Now, if you wanna see what this looks like, you can actually hit this play button right here and then go back to scene. And now let's go ahead and try moving the avatar around. And when you move the avatar around, you see the hair kind of waving and bouncing. And that's essentially what the avatar hair is gonna look like. You can test to make sure that it's not going in the head very much because of the collider and just make sure that everything looks as you want it to. Yeah, I turned the elasticity up a little bit, up to like half because I just thought it was like way waving a little bit too much. And then I also increased the damping just a little bit because I thought it looked a little bit too unrealistic. I think right here with like 0.5, around 0.5 for damping and elasticity and then 0.8 for stiffness, I think that looks like pretty good natural looking hair. Again, try it in VR chat and make sure it still looks good. Now, all of these settings, I just set this while in the play mode. It's not gonna save if I exit the play mode now. So what I need to do is go to these dots right here and hit copy component. And then I'm gonna exit play mode. And then you see all my settings got reverted to what they were before I entered play. So now I need to hit that and then hit paste component values and that's gonna save all the values that I had. And that's pretty much it for dynamic bones. Just remember to add the dynamic bones to the parent element instead of each of the individual bones, because that's just gonna be a lot better and a lot more optimized. And it's just a lot quicker and easier. Also feel free to add more colliders. So for example, if you added hoodie strings, you can add colliders on your chest. If you want your hands to be able to touch the hair and move it around, you can add colliders to your hands even. The more components you add, the less optimized it's gonna be. So that's why I really just want the hair to bounce, but those are all options. All right, once you have the dynamic bones done, go ahead and do a test build of your avatar. And then once you have everything done that you want to do for your avatar, you can do a final build. When you're here trying to do a final build, you'll probably see some of these issues pop up that the performance is now poor. This is for a variety of reasons. For example, you have dynamic bones added, which generally makes it less optimized. Um, you added more polygons when you added more items and then having more materials. All of that's fine. Just if you want to have a separate version of your avatar that's more optimized for like clubs and stuff like that, maybe make one and upload one that doesn't have all of the extra goodies that we added. But once you're done, we're just going to hit publish and build for Windows. It'll just take a few minutes for it to do the actual final build and then upload it to all of VR chat. All right, that's pretty much everything I know about how to add avatars. There's more to it and there's plenty of tutorials that you can look up. I think this hits all the major points, but you know, there's always more to learn. Don't forget to save your work as you go and constantly do test builds of the avatar and try it in VR chat because bugs do happen. Sometimes one part of it just might not work and it's good to figure out what part is broken. If you do run into bugs or issues, feel free to hit me up in the Discord server, but I'll be honest, most of the time that bugs come up, people 
people just aren't following the instructions exactly or a weird bug happens and you just need to like start over with a fresh project or something like that. This happened a lot in the Blender part of this tutorial. A lot of people had the same bug, but all of them were able to fix it by just reinstalling Blender and starting over. If reinstalling and starting over doesn't fix the whatever bug it is, just hit me up and I'll do my best to help you out. If you've stuck with this tutorial from the first video, that's amazing. Congratulations. You're now a Vroid VR chat expert. Have fun making some avatars. And also thanks to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. You all make this possible for me to keep making these videos. So again, thank you.